So now that it's 2023 already, a lot of Star Wars fans are embracing a lot of the upcoming shows like Mando Season 3 and the Ahsoka Tano series, along with Star Wars Celebration, by the way, that takes place over in London by this April. That's really going to kickstart a lot of the announcements of the future Star Wars shows for the upcoming roadmap that's being formed by Favreau, Filoni, Iger, and yes, even George Lucas. This is Mike Zero. Subscribe if you're new and like this video to see future Star Wars updates. I'm also on Twitter at MikeZero1. I thank you all so very much for the kind support. Now, one thing about Disney Star Wars right now is that there's a lot of change happening behind closed doors. Basically, Iger has been getting very much desperate and going into damage control mode, going into a panic because he wants to keep his legacy alive. And it has been pretty much, you know, hinted at that Iger's not going to stay as the CEO for as long as you think. Now, he's not going to be around for, you know, 10 years or 6 years even. This is more of a temporary shoe-in that Bob Iger came back for to really kind of propel Marvel in the better direction and Star Wars in a very good direction. You know, basically, we all know that Phase, um, you know, 4 kind of lacked a little bit with when, it, when it came to Marvel. And now, of course, with Star Wars, they're trying to really build it from the ground up. That's what 2023 is all about. It's really about building Star Wars from the ground up again. And it all begins with Mando Season 3 and the Ahsoka Tano series. Again, these are very important shows because these shows are really going to convince fans on whether or not Star Wars is back in action. So with that being said and all, what's even all the more exciting about what recently happened between George Lucas and Kathleen Kennedy. With creator George Lucas very involved with the upcoming Star Wars shows by Jon Favreau and Dave Filoni, Kathleen Kennedy has been struggling with the upcoming Skeleton Crew series and Acolyte show. However, just recently the Disney higher-ups, also known as the board, came to a decision that is said to be a major one involving George Lucas. Now just recently, the Disney board dropped Kathleen Kennedy as a producer from one of the upcoming Star Wars shows that is said to be one of their biggest Star Wars shows yet. Now recently the board removed Kathleen Kennedy as a producer from the series since they had little to no optimism about her producing strategies for that upcoming show, which is going into the works right now as we speak. Now recently the Disney board members decided to allow George to become a producer of that series, taking over Kathleen Kennedy with Jon Favreau by his side as an executive producer to help handle the show properly. Now let me just stop right here for a second. Now, in case we did not dive into this just yet, this is all about a show called Star Wars Mandalore. And basically what Mandalore is gonna be about is that it's basically gonna be treated like, I don't wanna say it's gonna be like the Avengers of Star Wars, I know some fans may hate that, but it is kinda like that. It's where all of the characters are coming together and they're all gonna split up into different groups, basically, is what's gonna happen. So, Mandalore, it's supposed to kinda start off with this big thing where all of the major characters are gonna join. Luke, Ahsoka, Din, Grogu, Sabine, Ezra, Eris, and Dula, you name it. And really kind of grouping out across the galaxy. For example, Ahsoka and Luke going on a mission, Din and Grogu going on a mission, or Sabine, Ren, and Ezra Bridger going elsewhere. It's stuff like that. And you know what? I don't have a problem with that at all, to an extent. Now, we already know that storyboards have been created for Star Wars Mandalore, multiple illustrations by both John and Dave that have been finalized to be used in a script, which, by the way, is going to begin by this upcoming spring. So give or take maybe around April, perhaps the very beginning of May. And there's a lot of work being poured into Star Wars Mandalore. Even Jon Favreau hinted at the show that he has a show that he's creating that is going to be considered the evolution of the Mandalorian. We also have another show, Ghost Track, that's the actual code name, of a Thrawn and Ezra Bridger focused series. Now, you can see that the shows are beginning to kind of build upon each other, how each show is serving as a branch to kind of create other spin-offs. You know, basically Ahsoka brings Thrawn and Ezra into the mix. 
then Thrawn and Ezra get their own show. In that show, you might get new characters that may very well be getting their own show after that. So it's very much like a very, you know, branching out system by John and Dave. Now, on to the next thing. Now, this show is said to be titled Star Wars Mandalore and will be the evolution of the Mandalorian series and considered a Bo-Katan show and the origin of Tar Vizsla, a guy who, by the way, was both a Mandalorian and a Jedi. The series is set to showcase the Mandalorian and Jedi wars and battles while also jumping to the present time, featuring Bo-Katan, Din Djarin, and Luke with Ahsoka and others like Thrawn. The series is set to focus on two wars, one led by Thrawn in present, and one between the Jedi and Mandalorians in the past, along with the storytelling of Tara Vizsla and the construction of the Dark Saber and its origins. Very interesting stuff, I gotta say. The show is really looking even better than The Mandalorian, if I really have to say that myself here. I gotta tell you, I mean, when you look at John and Dave's work, it's really becoming more and more embedded within the mythology. Now, again, I don't want to say that Din Djarin was a boring character in the beginning, but I think that he really became all the more interesting when he had that conflict between himself and Bo-Katan that's going to be told in Season 3 and how the Dark Saber kind of gave him this extension as a character aesthetic-wise. And you kind of like gravitate toward that character a little bit more now ever since he wielded the Dark Saber multiple times. So beyond all of this too, given that George is now going to be a producer for this upcoming Mandalore series, which by the way, we're not going to see this thing at least until 2025. At what point in that year? We're not quite sure. Could it be the first quarter or the second, third or fourth? That's a big mystery. If it's going to be the fourth quarter, you got a ways to go. You know, you got all of this year, all of 24, and then all of 25, basically. So let's hope that this is going to arrive earlier in 2025 rather than later. Then that would at least make the wait less harsh. So I think that this is a very good thing of what they did because Kathleen Kennedy would have surely just took this in the wrong direction with the budgeting and everything along with the marketing. Now, thankfully, of course, there's, by the time the show arrives, she's gonna be long gone. They're trying to get her out by August of 23 this year. That's the concrete plan by Bob Iger and the higher-ups. And that is their plan that they are set on. They have no intentions to reverse that. They are set on trying to get her out by August of this year. So there's a lot of work being poured into that and there's a lot of changes coming our way when it comes to Star Wars in general. So overall, I think that you're gonna see a lot of shifts when it comes to how the fans react to upcoming shows by John and Dave. Anyways guys, drop a comment below. Let me know what you guys have to say about all this below in the comments. And if you guys did enjoy the content for today, make sure to drop a thumbs up on this video to support the channel. I thank you all so very much for the kind support and I'll catch you guys next time.